move on to the next example of how we control it. How many of you are familiar with any of the newer fuel systems in, in OEM vehicles that control the fuel pressure via pulse width modulation? The nice thing about PWM control is that what we do is control the speed of the pump. And by doing that, instead of having a mechanical regulator with a set pressure based on how much spring freedom there is on the valve, we can make the fuel pressure anything we want. And in fact, that's how we did it in our display downstairs. We do it by varying the speed of the pump. And we can do really neat things like have, say, 30 PSI differential pressure across the ejector and idle, and say, 70 PSI under boost. That allows us to run a relatively small, well-behaved injector for good idle quality, crank the pressure up under boost. It's a little trick that you'll see uh, a number of manufacturers do, specifically Ford. This is from my car, a 2007 GT500. These are some of the parameters that are, that are available to tune that system. And there are tables here that provide a fuel pressure target versus operating condition. Obviously, when you're under boost, you need a good high flowing injector. Well, the oil cranking up the pressure didn't handle that. You do the opposite down low. Does everyone, or does anyone, understand how pulse width modulation of a fuel pump works? Uh, I see a couple of no's, a couple of yeses, and I see somebody doing this. So here's the deal. Just like we supply a pulse to a fuel injector to turn it on and off, we can do that to any electronic device. The difference is that you can give a fuel injector a small pulse, say a three millisecond pulse, and that injector will, in that short period of time, open, squirt some fuel, and turn it off again. A fuel pump, on the other hand, has a lot of inertia. It has inductance built into the system, so you can tag that pump with the slightest pulse, and it might not do anything, or it might just wiggle. So what we can do is control that with a pulse width, just like we do an injector, and when we want more fuel, with an injector, we increase the duty cycle, meaning we make that pulse wider. Instead of three milliseconds, maybe it's seven, maybe it's eight. Anywhere from essentially zero duty cycle, meaning we're never pulsing that, to 100% uh, duty cycle, where it's getting voltage all the time. And what happens is these pulses are coming so quick that the pump doesn't stop and start. It just keeps rolling. Imagine a flywheel spinning on a car and you reach out and grab it every once in a while. Well, it keeps spinning in between because it has inertia. It doesn't immediately stop when you take your hand off, but it doesn't immediately start spinning again when you touch it. And that's essentially what we're doing with pulse lift modulation on fuel pumps. We supply a signal at a high enough frequency that the pump cannot instantly react to it. It's not enough, the, the, not enough to overcome the inertia. And so by increasing that pulse width for that duty cycle, we can control the speed of the pump and literally get any pressure that we want. The uh, auto manufacturers are doing a really good job of it for a number of reasons. One is that when you're cruising down the road, you don't need all that big pump. Or maybe you've got a very high horsepower car that has, uh, say, a pair of Bosch 044s in the tank. They draw a lot of current, they make a lot of noise. Well, when you're cruising down the road at 60 miles an hour, you don't need all that. If you had pulse width modulation control of your fuel pump, you could simply turn those pumps down during that period of time. Even with a mechanical regulator, which is something that I've done on one of my own vehicles, I supply enough fuel from the pump to just keep the regulator bypassing a little bit. So the car still functions on a mechanical regulator, which sets the pressure, but there's no need for me to be generating all that heat and sending 20 amps to that big pump when I'm just cruising down the road. The reason I have the picture of this, uh, this MoTeC DHB is that we don't have to have a stock ECU to deal with, or to have pulse width modulator control. If we have a MoTeC, we can use this thing called DHB, which stands for dual half bridge, and we can use the MoTeC itself to define a duty cycle for that pump under varying conditions. So this is simply a big switch that flips the power on and off to this pump at the high rate that we spoke of, in the ECU, we enter a table that says, uh, it's such and such an RPM of load, I want this duty cycle, uh, and we can control it based on any parameter that we're interested in, so we're not spinning the hell out of those pumps. And while that may not seem like a big deal for a 200 and some horsepower car, you guys all know that we literally have 12, 1300 horsepower streetcars running around out there. That takes a lot of pump. It generates a lot of heat, makes a lot of noise. So if you have a car like that, hopefully you have some kind of control. 
Motec will do it, probably the new Haltech will do it. There's probably a number of DCUs that will do it. And this DHB from Motec can be used with any engine management system that puts out a pulse signal. So it's a nice thing to be able to do. Any questions about PWM control fuel pumps? Not that question, but it seems like even like uh, I know Subaru does it, even though it's a return system from the factory. Uh, they, they run with different duties, and, and I just don't know why. Well, the fuel pump, uh, for one, to save to save energy, uh, fuel pumps are very inefficient. Uh, a twenty-five percent a fuel pump with twenty-five percent efficiency would be very very good. That means that approximately seventy-five percent of everything passing into that just gets turned to heat, which ends up in the fuel. Which makes it a to start the car. Uh, it's energy that's being wasted. I mean, don't forget that's not free. For as much as we hear about electric cars, that voltage comes from the alternator, which is connected to the crank with belt. So we got to turn it. Is the fuel flow really linear? Uh, does it pulse with my pump? It is approximately linear. And the nice thing about that is you can make some assumptions as you're tuning things because in a newer vehicle uh, where you have to tune those, like my Ford, for instance. If I were to change fuel pumps or use a candy belt, boost the pump or something like that, all those parameters have changed. And uh, even though it's a closed loop system, meaning it will correct in much the same way the lambda control does, it works much better if the control values are put there to begin with so the corrections are small. In much the same way that having the right injector data keeps your closed loop trimmers from being big. It is approximately linear, meaning if you plot flow at 30%, 50%, 70%, you're not going to draw a perfectly straight line through there, but more or less. Now, that's just been the case on the pumps that I've paid specific attention to. There may be many examples out there that will, uh, that will throw that off, but uh, that's been my experience so far, so it, it does and can simplify things. Any other questions about PWM control? Do you need to run 100% duty initially to keep it from, to get it moving? No, no, not at all. It is possible to take some small amount to get it running if it's more than the amount that would keep it running, but I don't think any car is ever operating in that specific range. So it does have some hysteresis there, and I don't think anyone will ever, will ever get into that range. Where you can run into problems with these systems, and this comes back to your question, is that when you make big changes in the system, and you ask, for instance, when the airflow through the airflow meter increases sharply because I have a supercharged car and I just put my foot in and suddenly I got a shitload of boost, now I want 60 psi instead of 30, there is closed loop control that will adjust that until it gets to 60. The thing about it is you don't have time for that. You want to have a feed forward table that essentially lays out the parameters that say under these conditions, this is what the duty cycle should be. Hopefully that's within two or three or five percent, then your closed loop control can adjust accordingly. So his question is very important because he's going to end up tuning one of these sooner or later, and he's going to need it to be right, essentially. You don't want to let the closed loop control chase its tail any more than you would want to do a shit tune up on a car and let the closed loop control take care of your fuel ratios. There's going to be spikes all over the place. He's laughing because he probably just fixed one yesterday that was done that way. I was just thinking some of these off-the-shelf kits that we see right downstairs, they'll tune them so. I see. There's a lot of stuff to see downstairs. <laughs> In any case, uh, can I leave this? Move on to the next. Any questions there? Sweet. You guys are all really smart. Or I'm explaining things correctly. Or it's so simple you're shaking your head. Yeah, I fucking get it. Come on. <laughs>